Hi guys. FedEx just dropped this off. I ordered on the 12th of December, so it's been a little over a month. And what is in this box is a pressure washer. And this all started with a thought. I have a Krenzla K1322, came from Obsessed Garage. I think that it's a fantastic pressure washer. I've had it for four years, it has been excellent. And I, like many other people who bought a K1322 or any other larger pressure washer, AR630, Active 2.3, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I installed a dedicated 20 amp receptacle inside my garage specifically for that pressure washer. So my panel is over there. There's a piece of 12 gauge that runs from my panel directly into a singular receptacle that my pressure washer connects to. And that pressure washer is uh, about 1.8 gallons per minute at about 1100 PSI. It's been tested by many, many people. That's about the result that it gets. What I realized is that we are approaching the limitations of the standard 20 amp, 120 volt outlet. So <clears throat> I have an electrical background, maybe you don't, and that's okay. Uh, I'll try to make this a little bit easier to follow, but so electricity simplified coming into your house as a supply or coming from the utility can really be described as two different things. There's voltage and there's current. In North America, in the United States, our household voltage at most receptacles at most places in your house is going to be like 115, 120 volts, something thereabouts. At our electrical panel, we actually have um, 230 or 240 volts delivered, and that's split into kind of three different legs. So you've got like three wires, and wire one to wire two is 115 volts, Wire two to wire three is 115 volts, and wire one to wire three is 230 volts. So, so they, they deliver 230 volts to the house to aid in transmission of power. Higher voltages can go longer distances without losses. They step it down to 115 volts because that's safer for most people if they were to get shocked or something along those lines. But most houses will have some 230 volt or 240 volt components in their, in their house. That for me is uh, my oven. My oven is electric. Um, if you had maybe an electric dryer or um, an electric uh, stovetop range uh, or an electric hot water heater, an electric furnace, all of those things would typically be 230 or 240 volts rather than the 115 to 120. The other thing is current, which is measured in amps. So a standard circuit in like a bedroom, it's gonna be 120 volts, 15 amps. To put it simply, the amount of current determines how many things that we can run. So if we've got a, you know, a, a big motor, that big motor might draw 15 amps or 18 amps or something along those lines, and your lights might draw four amps. And if you turn both of them on at the same time, you pop your breaker because you overamped it and you drew too much current. In our houses, we have wiring that goes through the walls from our panel to our receptacles, and that wiring is sized based on current. In my garage, I've got about 40 feet of wire that goes between that wall and that wall where my panel is, and that wire is sized to 12 gauge because that allows me to do 20 amps of current at that distance but the wire really doesn't care about the voltage. The wire is actually rated for 20 amps at 120 all the way up to 250. So what we can do if we have a dedicated circuit, this is only if you have a dedicated circuit for your pressure washer, you can swap the breaker in your panel from a 120 volt breaker to a 240 volt breaker, and you can have 240 volts available at your pressure washer instead of 120. Now, if you do that, what that means is you can actually increase the size of the motor that that can run. So a Krenzla is probably a two horsepower motor, something thereabouts. I don't know exactly what it is, but two horsepower is about the limit of what a 120 volt, 20 amp circuit can run. But if we do a breaker change, which is like a $15 part at Lowe's and 10 minutes of my time, and a receptacle swap on the other side to a 240 volt receptacle, 
we can actually run a four horsepower motor off of a 240 volt 20 amp circuit. So then I started looking at, okay, what is the biggest pump that I can get that will run off of a four horsepower motor and deliver me as much flow as possible? So I found this company, Can Pump. They're based in Canada. They have a store in um, Arizona as well. And I purchased from them two different parts. One is an electric motor and the other is a pressure washer pump. And this should be uh, about the limits of what you could do without changing the wiring that is in your walls without having to cut open walls and you know do all of that. And a breaker change is something that is really simple. Most people should be comfortable doing it. If you're not, I am not going to teach you how, you will ha have to hire an electrician. So this motor is a Nicolini motor. Um, it is a four horsepower, five eighths arbor. That's the size of this. And it runs at uh, 1750 RPMs. So it says here, four horsepower, 230 volt, 17 amps, 60 hertz, four horsepower, 1750 RPMs. So this is what they would call a half speed motor in that it runs at 1750 RPMs. And we can get a full speed motor, but that's going to be louder. So I decided to go with a half speed motor. This is a Comet pump. And this Comet pump will mate to this motor and the motor can run it. And this Comet pump has no unloader valve um, because I'm going to use orifice changes to do that. So this is an LWS 3020, which means that it should do three gallons per minute at 2000 PSI. I'm um, thinking when we size up the orifice, we might get a little bit more flow. I'm hoping for like 3.2, 3.3. I think I'll be happy with 3.0 if it's not loud. And then uh, there is a way that I can add total stop to this. I did not buy that yet because I didn't want to, um, it's like another 300 bucks and I don't know if this is gonna work or not. So, all right, so as a professional product, there really isn't a lot of uh, information here. So we're just gonna figure this out. These connect together. Uh, that's interesting. Right out of the box, it looks like this might not work. So my bolt pattern is different here. And then also I've got space for my, sh my shaft. Hello, thank you for calling Can Pump. You've reached us outside of our normal business hours. Our office... <sighs> well, bummer. Okay, well, sometimes this is, this is how it goes, right? Basically what I'm running into here are two problems. One, the, um, the bolt pattern on these two doesn't match up. And then two, the, um, the shaft length is a little too long for the Comet. So it looks like what I probably need is an adapter plate for this. That's gonna take me from the smaller piece to a larger one. Uh, so I'll have to reach out to them and see <clears throat> what they have available and go from there. So that's a bummer, but not unsurprising, honestly. Um, I did talk to and work with somebody there and we spec this out together. Um, so I guess I am a little surprised that it doesn't fit, but it is what it is. So anyway, uh, I'll reach out to them next week and see what they say. We made some progress today. They were able to find a different plate that's going to mount on here. That's going to fit the thread pattern here and also give me the length that I need. So what I'm working on right now are the electrics. So when you take this cap off, there's a bag of parts. So there's a couple of washers and nuts, and there are um, three of these bars. And then the, the wires, the blue, the brown, the brown, and the red are already on those terminals. 
you can run this in two ways, either clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're going to run it in clockwise fashion, then you go from W1 to W2 with a strap and from U1 and U2 with a strap like this. And then you have one leg here and one leg here. So one wire will come into each, each of these two. Um, if you're going to run this in counterclockwise, then you do the straps this way and again, come into um, this one and this one or this one and this one either way. What I'm working on right now is getting this wired up. So there's a cap here and this cap has um, like a cable grip on it. So this loosens up and then there's little teeth on the inside um, and it's a weather tight connector. So I have the wire, this is from the Krenzla K1322. This is what I cut off of the plug. And this is a 240 volt or 250 volt wire. It's 14 gauge. So we're going to put this in here and we'll get this wired up. And then uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Our ground wire here white and black here and that should give us what we need just when you're doing this you have to be careful of this gasket make sure that you um, put this gasket on the right way or you won't get it on after the fact and then we have this um, cap here that goes like that put our cap back on we can tighten this down like that and then we can try this out see if it works. It should spin clockwise. So it looks like this is going to be a little bit more challenging than I thought, but we'll make this a two-part episode. Basically, I worked with Can Pump. They're sending me a different flange for this. Um, fortunately, the flange they're sending me is actually from a Bertolini, which is a separate, a different type of pump. Um, they were surprised that this particular Comet has this size flange when the um, the centerpiece here is 5 8 So typically when it has a 5 8 this matches what that motor has. Then I started digging into kind of the next piece, which is fittings, because, you know, obviously like we need some fittings to make this thing work so we can connect our water and stuff. So it has inlet and outlet. Inlet is on the bottom, outlet is on the top. You can see that there's arrows there and you can actually inlet or outlet on both sides, but the motor's gonna be here. So we really need to come in from this side. Now, one thing that's interesting about this, because this Comet pump is made in Europe, it uses a thread type that is different than what we use in North America. So in North America, we use NPT, or National Pipe Thread, which looks like that. And it has a slight taper to it. You can actually see like there's a little, a little bit of a slant there. Um, in Europe, they use something called BSP, or G-thread, uh, which is what these fittings are, and those are parallel thread. So if we look at this, we can actually see that it's flat the whole way. So these are adapters, they're stainless steel, and they are um, BSP to NPT adapters. And I realized I could have done brass because like this head is brass, um, but I couldn't find brass ones that could run the uh, pressure that I need to that weren't going to take forever to arrive. So I ended up going with stainless, they do have, you see they have like an O-ring on them, so it's like a Buna seal. Um, so we've got our in and out, and this gets us back to um, NPT. So then on the inlet side, obviously we wanna to connect to a garden hose. So this is a three-quarter garden hose female to a half NPT male, and now this is half NPT as well. So basically we did half BSP to half NPT, there's a half NPT elbow just to give me the angle that I want. And then, um, which obviously like you don't need this elbow, you could just screw this garden hose adapter directly into this and the garden hose would come out the front instead of coming out the bottom. And then this will screw in here like this and we can get this all nice and tightened up. Um, so with BSP, because it's not tapered, uh, you can really, seal it in one of two ways. You don't typically use uh, Teflon tape the way that we do in the United States. You either use an O-ring, like this has this washer with this O-ring on it, or you use a thread sealant like this Loctite 545. So this is what it's gonna end up looking like when it's mounted on the end of the 
um, motor, I'll have my garden hose come in the bottom and then I'll have my plug come out the top and this will go up to my reel. Now I did swap out the, um, they gave me a difference, like a dipstick um, oil cap that has a breather in it. And we can see there's an oil view on the front and on the side. So we can check our level and obviously it looks high, but it's not currently sitting level. It did come full of oil, which is nice. Now they're sending me this Bertolini cap, which is gonna go here. And basically we're gonna take out these Allens here and we're gonna replace this with one that is both um, deeper in this direction and also wider to fit the motor. Now we do need to fasten the two of them together. I found the Nicolini motor actually uses an M8 by one and a quarter. And I really needed like a 25 millimeter length. So this is a 20 actually. Um, so I ended up ordering, these are from Amazon, um, M8 one and a quarter by 25 that are, they're black um, and they have a, a very similar uh, layout to this where they've got like that washer built into the head like that. So we'll get that connected. Um, there's the original cap. I was able to get the Nicolini wired up. Now I made it so that the motor spins clockwise. So this shaft spins this direction clockwise, but that means it's spinning the pump counterclockwise. Now, one thing I found interesting is nowhere in the pump's instructions does it say what direction it needs to spin. So I talked to the people at Can Pump. They said that it should be able to spin in either direction, but typically they set up the motors to go clockwise and the pumps to go counterclockwise. So that's the way that I'm gonna start it out. If I have to spin it the other direction, it's just a wiring change in the top, so it's not a huge deal to flip that. Um, but it's uh, it's been really interesting. There isn't a lot of documentation on this. As far as the Comet documentation is concerned, it's really all service information, how to break it down, how to replace seals, but not really how to install it. And it's the same thing on the Nicolini side. The Nicolini has you know some measurements, uh, horsepower and uh, power usage figures, but no, like the wiring diagram was even really difficult for me to find. So I'll put a link down below to all of the stuff that I did find on this, but it's been pretty interesting. Now, what I will say is this might turn out to be a waste of time. And I'll get into that on the, the final video a little bit more. But basically there is a, a self-contained setup that can pump cells that comes with Nicolini motor and a Bertolini pump with the right fittings on the shelf with a total stop system all together. And it's like 1160 bucks. This is probably going to be somewhere in the 1500 range and it should outperform that, but I don't think that it's going to be enough to make it worthwhile, especially if this flange ends up being unobtainium in a way, um, because it's not like a Comet part that I'm buying. It's actually, you know, I reached out to them and I was like, hey, this doesn't fit. And they said, well, we have a Bertolini pump that has the right flange on it and we're going to just send you the flange. You know, sorry that it didn't fit. We thought that it would. So now it's like, well, I can make it work for me, but I can't necessarily make it work for you. So I have to figure that piece out too. Um, but I, it's been an interesting ride. Uh, so we'll, we're gonna play around with this a little bit more. I'm waiting for some more parts. Today is Saturday. Uh, so this video will come out on Sunday. Um, the updated flange should be here on Tuesday. It was last scanned in Illinois. I'm still waiting on the 3 8 plug. If the 3 8 plug is the only thing I don't have, then I'll figure out a way to make it work without it because I don't, I don't need a quick connect on it. I can just plumb it in. So far, uh, so far so good.